gentlemen, it's a real honour and a pleasure to be here today, and I'm very delighted that I'm in such a good company here as well with our international speakers. I'd just like to congratulate the Irish Cancer Society for all the work they've done over the years, and John, and his distinct leadership, and Kathleen, who's been very much to the fore in the work that you have done. I think it's great that we've got a Cancer Week that you've managed to coordinate it with the European uh, Cancer Initiatives as well in relation to the Alliance and the WHO and the European Partnership Against Cancer. You've been very successful at getting rid of the taboo of cancer because cancer was like TB and I know as a GP people were terrified of it, uh, afraid to talk about it, Sometimes the amount of people would say, please don't tell him he has cancer, doctor. And that's all changed now. People are prepared to talk about it because the prospect is much brighter than it used to be. The cure rates are much higher than it used to be. And people <coughs> now can face it with the help that you give them and the courage that you help them develop. But it's still a scary thing to have. And while the outcomes have improved, they're not always great for everybody. And we have spent billions of euro on research, and we've saved thousands of lives with new treatments. And yet, there is this product out there on the market that's legal. That's the only product I know of that will, if you use it as recommended by its manufacturer, is going to kill one in two of you. Now, I know it's not going to kill one in two of anybody here because you know better. But we just saw an ad of how easily children are <coughs> affected and influenced by advertising. And we banned the advertising of cigarettes. We banned behind the counter vision of them. They have to be kept hidden away. And John mentioned about the European Directive, which we've been very strongly supporting and trying to move along. And we've had very good meetings with lots of people in Europe, and we're beginning to win the argument there. And I'm hoping that this directive will get to Council, that we can have an agreed position so the Parliament can deal with it. <coughs> and when I was at the European Parliament, the response there was very strong to the directive. And I did make the point, you've just seen an ad there. This is what the cigarette companies are using to attract children. A very nice, attractively packaged pink box that looks like perfume. And it's what they call the silent salesman. It's their last vestige of advertising. It's their mobile billboard, as other people have called it. And that's advertising, pure and simple. And there's 20 cigarettes in it. But what we want is that. What our friends in Australia have done and I congratulate them and commend them. That's reality. That's not advertising. That's what happens to you. And there's a picture of a young man in full health, and that's him on his, I suppose, last days, and a very sad picture. And if children see that, they won't want to go near this. But if they see that, they'll be interested, they'll be intrigued. I don't know any smoker, I've never met one yet, wants their child to smoke. And yet this product remains out there. It kills 5,200 Irish people every year and across Europe it kills 700,000 people. 700,000 Europeans every year. And so I come back to all the money that we spent on research trying to find those things that would help us cure cancer. When here is a glaringly obvious agent that's out there causing it. We have to rid Ireland and Europe of this toxic carcinogen. It's as simple as that. And John's absolutely right. It is about our children and about their future and their well-being because 78% of smokers in a survey in this country said they started under the age of 18. And we know that for every smoker who quits and for those who die, the cigarette industry the tobacco industry has to recruit new smokers, and it's our children they go after. So, 
We're not a nanny state. We believe in freedom of the individual. But what freedom have you got when you turn 18 if you're already addicted? Now, as people know, I lost a brother to smoking. He was a doctor. He was an epidemiologist, actually, public health. And he couldn't kick it. And he died at the age of 60 from lung cancer. My father, a doctor, got a stroke in the 66 and spent the last 14 years of his life blind because of smoking. And I don't want other families to have to endure that. So, yes, it's professional because I've seen so many patients suffer. And it's personal. And I don't make any apology for taking the stand that I take, or that you take, or that my government has taken. <clears throat> and our teacher who backs me to the hilt on this. So, yeah, cigarette industry, of course, <laughs> do what any good advertising company will tell you to do when faced with a hard question, which is, this is a killer. But let's not talk about the killer, let's talk about smuggling instead, pivot it away. And of course, that's a rubbish argument too, because if we're the only country in Europe with these packets, how are people going to smuggle packets in here? They're going to have to repackage them. It's going to be more difficult for them. How will people smuggle stuff out of here? The same thing. So we hope, of course, we won't be the only. I know that the Scottish are looking at this very closely. But let's, yeah, let's be leaders again in the fight against tobacco. Let's save our children from a future of harm and pain and suffering that can be avoided as long as we protect it. Because if you get into your 20s without having smoked, the chances of you smoking are pretty small. So, I just want to finish by thanking you, everybody in this room, for all the work you do to help all the people who've been touched by cancer. And I want to tell you that I've written to the Commissioner of Health, Tony O'Borg, who's been very supportive of the directive and has progressed it. And I'm asking him to use his influence at the Commission to support Australia, the World Trade Organization. I've also written to the Taoiseach to ask him to use his influence with Manuel Barroso, Manuel Barroso, the head of the Commission, so that Europe will support Australia at the World Trade Organization. And I know he will because I've already spoken to him about it and he invited me to write the letter. So I'm very happy to have done that and I know that the letter we get back will be positive. The other thing we're doing is we're beefing up our tobacco control unit in the Department of Health. And I see Dilly O'Brien here. For the battle ahead, because as John said, there will be a battle. There'll be many battles. And this is a war. But it's a war we're going to win. Because that's the least we can do for our children and future generations. Thank you very much.